Hello, Nicholas here. Today I'd like to talk to you about Chicago Express, which is a game that I enjoy quite a bit. However, I won't be talking about rules or why I enjoy it in this video. Instead, I'm going to go over some strategy and tactics, that is how I like to approach the game, in the hopes that it will help you enjoy it more, maybe win a little bit more, uh, or if you're already enjoying it a lot and winning a lot, perhaps it just gives you something to think about. So first, as a general point, in Chicago Express, it's hard to have a long-term strategy and stick to it for the whole game. Uh, it's a very interactive game, and what people do may ruin your plans, of course, and it's possible that even a single action can drastically change the course of the game for at least you and probably some of your other opponents as well. On that note, Incentives are the key to success in Chicago Express. However, they involve pretty much everything else about the game, so first I want to talk about some other things. Starting with timing, which is pretty important. You need to pay attention to who will have access to which actions, especially who gets the auction actions, since they allow them to pick the share that goes up for auction, if one goes up at all. Um, and in a three or four player game, uh, who will have multiple expansion actions available to them? Of course, since they get to do two of those, it will be most important to understand what they want to do. Uh, sometimes that will be you, but oftentimes it's going to be someone else and you want to keep that in mind. Uh, coming back to auctions again, as will happen a lot, uh, the timing of the auctions, and in particular your financial position going into them, is pretty important to make sure that they go for an appropriate sum and you have enough control. But especially the first company that reaches Chicago, uh, you want to watch out for because that's going to start up the Wabash Railroad with an auction. And the shareholders of that company are going to have an additional dividend paid just before. Uh, and that's pretty important. Overall, in terms of timing, you need to keep an eye on the length of the game. So there are a bunch of in-game triggers, and which of those happens and when is going to determine the long-term value of a bunch of the options that you have before you, uh, primarily how valuable the different companies are, um, but it can also make some plans just totally inviolable, like you just don't have enough time to execute them and they don't pay off until you finish them. So sometimes those aren't worth doing if the game is going to end first. Uh, generally speaking, the game length could theoretically be as little as two rounds. Um, however, that will require a concerted effort, I think, on several players' part. I don't think I've ever seen it happen. Uh, Three rounds is more likely, but still pretty short. Four and five rounds are what I'm used to seeing. Uh, six is getting a little bit on the long end. And then seven or eight, I don't think I've ever actually seen happen. So with the timing out of the way, let's take a look at each of the actions, starting with develop. Develop allows you to increase the revenue generated by hex. However, you'll almost never do this action and it's possible that will never happen in the entire game, and that is fine. Perhaps the most useful thing that you can do with develop is manipulate the timing of the game in terms of who gets what actions. Um, because in theory, you could instead get money for a company, but expansion is usually better for that. The most that you can get out of developing a company is $2, where you can almost always get $2 out of expanding a company, and quite frequently you can get 3 or $4, occasionally more than that, but that's generally how things fall. It's also worth noting that developing Detroit can occasionally be used to manipulate the length of the game. Now let's talk about expansion. The first question, of course, is what company to expand, and that will usually be whatever benefits you the most in the short term. However, um, it's important to pay attention to board position, whether or not you can block off a company, or perhaps a company that you want to do well is about to get boxed in. 
Sometimes you might also use an expansion action to sabotage a company, uh, either by wasting its train so it can't get somewhere, uh, or instead wasting its money so it can't afford to go somewhere, or is pressured to have an additional share put up for auction. With that in mind, let's look at the board a little bit. So, here's a version of the map that just shows revenue per hex in terms of color. The greener the hex, the more revenue that it's worth. I've done this because it's a little hard to see, I think, just scanning the numbers where the money is. At the start of the game, Pittsburgh and Wheeling are the obvious focuses because they're worth a bunch and also because they have so many hexes near them that are individually low revenue, but because you can do three at a time, they add up to be a good amount of money. There's also some higher valued cities at the top and bottom of the board, which are important uh, for the yellow and green companies especially. Um, but later in the game, attention of course is going to be very focused on Chicago, since it's obviously the most valuable hex at the start of the game. And less obviously, Detroit is going to be important if companies are going out that far west. Development really evens the board out if you do one development per hex. Uh, again, of course, development doesn't happen very much, so this isn't usually helpful, but if a company has already expanded as much as it can, then sometimes this will balance things out in longer games. Um, and Detroit is going to get automatic development. Here you can see that Wheeling and Pittsburgh are still pretty nice. Chicago, of course, still stands out. Um, but Detroit still looks low. So let's look at the map now with the maximum number of developments done per hex. And here you can see that Detroit is now the most valuable hex in the game. However, of course, that also triggers the end of the game, so it won't be like that for very long. But in between, it's going to pay out a good amount of money. Now that we've looked at revenue, let's talk a little bit about cost, which you usually don't need to worry about too much. However, it's worth seeing that to the south and west of Pittsburgh, there's sort of this cup that's very expensive to build in. And there's also this odd little bump sort of to the southeast of Wheeling that you might want to pay attention to. However, most of the other hexes in the region are worth about the same amount in terms of cost, and the planes are, as always, very, very cheap. So, now that we've talked about the other two actions, let's talk a little bit about the auction action. This is where you're going to incentivize players, and therefore where the heart of the game lies. But first, it's important to understand that in Chicago Express, you are allowed to use an action, that is, you move the needle, but not actually do anything with it. You just end your turn. This is most commonly used with the auction action because you want to lock in the current distribution of shares. Furthermore, it's usually done at the beginning of the round so that when you're actually expanding companies, you know what's valuable to you. So, assuming that you actually want to auction off a share, you should have a goal in mind for that share. Do you want more money for yourself if you intend to win it? Do you want to put some more money into that company? Uh, do you want to dilute your opponent's holdings? So at the end of the game especially that's powerful because you can simply bid the exact amount that that share will pay out. Uh, and in that case, you basically just decrease the amount of money that the other shareholders are going to get. Uh, and lastly, you might make or break alliances by having someone get their share. But before we talk about alliances, let's talk a little bit about the value of the share. So you want to look at how much money that company is going to make over the rest of the game, which is usually hard to estimate. Um, but the main things you want to look at are can the company expand and where it can reach. And from there, formulate a rough idea of how much it will pay out. Of course, if you pay more than the company is actually going to pay you, then that's a losing proposition. Um, the other thing 
is that you need to keep in mind that later in the game, shares are actually worth less each. The most obvious reason for that is because there are fewer dividends to pay out for that share. The other less obvious reason is that even though the railroads are earning more money, the money is being split among more shares. So it might not go up very much and it might even go down as the game progresses. Another thing that you want to pay attention to in the auction is where that person is relative to you in turn order. And of course, which actions are going to be available to them. If there are still expansion actions left and they sit close to you, uh, then it might be that they use their turn to do the expansion action that you would have already done yourself. Uh, at first, that might not sound so great because you've traded an action for an action. However, they're not doing whatever else it was that they were going to do on their turn. And you also now have an ally to uh, help you build out that company, perhaps in later turns, or at least maybe not block it off so much or otherwise sabotage it. Um, that said, when it comes to alliances, it's worth bearing in mind that you might not actually want to win the share that you're putting up for auction. You might want it to go to someone else, ideally. Uh, and the reason for this is that alliances in the game are very dependent on the relative number of shares between players. If someone owns more shares of a company than the other shareholders, then the other shareholders are naturally less interested in helping that company do well because it's helping the player with the most shares the most. Um, Along these lines, you can actually dismantle an alliance simply by auctioning off a share if it goes to one of the existing shareholders. Uh, the last thing that you want to look at in terms of alliances is the geographic relationship between the companies is sometimes important. Um, at the start of the game, for example, of course, blue and yellow, because they're close to one another, are more interested in the other's fate. Uh, however, as the game progresses, of course, uh, different companies will become near others and you particularly want to watch out for places where money can be wasted uh, or they can simply be blocked out in the mountains or forests. So that's the auction action. Now that we've talked about all the actions, I want to go back to the very beginning of the game with the auction for the very first sets of shares. So. Regardless of player count, you should usually bid approximately half of your starting money, even though that varies depending on the player count. Uh, the reasons for this are a little subtle. Uh, one reason is that uh, you're definitely going to get more than half of your starting money in terms of revenue uh, as the game progresses, or almost certainly. Uh, in terms of bidding less, you might be able to bid a little bit less and position yourself for a later auction uh, because you'll have enough money to actually win it. Uh, and in particular, you want to keep in mind the fact that the different companies are going to have different amounts of revenue in that first dividend. Uh, the other direction, of course, is paying too much. And if you pay much more than half, then you have very little control over the auctions, both the later auctions in that starting round, uh, as well as in subsequent rounds, depending on revenue distribution. Uh, on that note, getting auctions for cheap at the start of the game is usually amazing and something that you absolutely must prevent, which is another reason to not bid too much. Okay. The other thing at the start of the game is the red company, uh, which is something that apparently some groups have struggled with. Uh, it's a little hard to deal with, uh, and the game doesn't provide any hints about it. Uh, so the usual problem is that someone wins the red share in the initial auction. They start the game, in a three or four player game, they get to do an additional expansion action, and they spend that first turn uh, doing that for the red company. The usual way to counter that is to 
simply auction off another share of red. So even though they're going to do more expands and they're getting more revenue, uh, you have either made them pay more for that same amount of revenue, or you've split that money between two players now uh, and the person who won the initial auction is worse off for it. The other thing to know about red is that it's extremely fragile in terms of its alliance uh, and also because it has so few trains. Uh, once you auction off the third share of red, that is usually its destruction because now one player owns twice as many shares as the other and that can never change. The minority shareholder at that point should definitely not expand the red company anymore and furthermore uh, might want to expand it by actually sabotaging it and wasting track and money on things that don't actually earn it more revenue. Um, for that reason, depending on the meta in your particular group as you play the game, uh, it might be not worthwhile messing with a red company uh, at some points. Of course, uh, as you develop more confidence and are able to maneuver around it a little bit better, perhaps you can pick it back up again. Um, so that's how I think about Chicago Express and the strategy and tactics of it. Uh, if you think about it differently, please leave a comment. Uh, if there was something that I wasn't clear about or you'd just like me to expand on a point, uh, please let me know. And otherwise, I'll see you later. Bye.